Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you for being here. I'm not even going to waste your time. This is part 7 of this build series and quite frankly, that's enough. This has taken way too long. So today, rain, hail or shine, we are going to finish this truck. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to another day. We're getting to the outside of this tub now, which I'm very, very happy about. So today is going to be a day about sanding, patching up holes in this tub. I've got to tell you, the tub has taken longer than the car itself, the rest of the car. So I'm uh, yeah, looking forward to having this thing buttoned up basically. It, it, there's been quite a bit of body work to do and uh, that's coming to an end. We're not quite there yet, but um, I can definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel now. I'll sand all of this back now, and then the rear section can then be painted with the uh, gloss black like everything else. And I'll even give this a coat of primer. <coughs> and then the inside of the tub is pretty much done, and we can move to the outside of the tub. So I'm gonna wheel this out and um, get sanding. Okay, second round of putty is on, and as you can see, I've just gone over some areas that I think need attention, just little spot bits along the top there. I'm gonna let this dry, and while it does, what I'm going to do is turn this thing on its side and start addressing these holes. Got a feeling this will take me a while, so uh, let's see how we go there. All right, let's get this turned around. Okay, that should do. So the reason I've turned this thing on its side is because of this. So I've got much better access to uh, this side of the tray if it's up here, as opposed to me trying to work down on the floor not seeing all the angles <clears throat> and I'm really glad I turned this thing up because the first thing I can see is that this line and this line no longer match can you see that so if we were to continue this line along like so it would end up there so this tapers in quite a bit so the first thing I'm going to need to do is um, do some chopping by the look of it. We're gonna need to cut that down like so. And then this one will obviously follow. So yeah, we're gonna do some measuring, uh, some marking and then cutting. Now, the other thing I've noticed is this is heading inwards. If you can see that, and it should be like so. So maybe this is twisted a little bit. Let's check the other side. Yeah, by the look of it, I oh know the other side is heading in a little as well, but not as much. So I've got a feeling, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty level all the way through. Whereas this one heads inwards. Can you see that? We need to turn this out a little bit. Okay, let's get to it.
All right, so as the sun is starting to set here, we've got ourselves a nice little mini tub, a short bed tub. And not too soon either. That was a lot of work, I've got to tell you. It's now in primer and it's ready for paint, but it took a lot of work as, as you saw. In fact, I would say more work than the rest of the truck combined. Just because of all that fab work, all that metal work that I had to do and kind of work out as I was doing it. I'm not a metal fabricator, I'm not a body, uh, auto body panel expert. I just um, had a crack and um, look, I'm pretty proud of the results. I'm pretty happy with it. It's looking nice and straight. There's a few little touches here and there that still need addressing, but I can do that on top of the primer. And then it's time to get some color on this thing and finally put it back together. So take a look at this. This is the other side of the patch panel that I welded in over here and on the other side as well. So as you can see, there's the um, weld lines. I've got a little bit of cleaning, cleaning up to do. Now I can already see that rust, surface rust is starting to form here. So what I'll do is I'll grind all of this back and I'll hit it as much as I can with um, the uh, enamel paint to protect this section pretty much the same way as I've done it here. Also, remember that piece we cut out with all the rust on it? Well, this is the other side. So as you can see, some of this paint has burnt away. So I just quickly rub this back with a wire brush and give it another coat of epoxy enamel there as well. And then after that, we should be pretty good to go with this tray. The one thing that came to mind is this tray is now a lot shorter than the frame on the truck. So what I'm going to need to do before I put this thing back down is bring the truck around and do some measurements and cutting to the frame itself to make sure that this goes back on properly. Because at the moment, the frame on the truck is longer than this tub now. So we're going to need to cut the frame down but I don't think that'll be too hard. Okay, let's get to it. Now I've done a few measurements and what I need to do is cut this entire section of beam off of here. So I'll be making a cut there on the other side as well. And then that will allow this tray to go onto this bed. Obviously once I've done that, I'm gonna to need to shorten the exhaust. The spare wheel will need to come out. Now, what am I gonna do in terms of having a spare tire on this? One option might be to carry the spare in the tray itself, but I thought a better solution might be to um, carry a puncture repair kit. So I've got one on one of my other cars and um, well, I've never needed it, but I am told that when you do, um, it can get you out of trouble, can get you to where you need to go. So I think that might be a better solution for this truck now that um, I can't carry the spare wheel under here because the bed will end roughly about there so the rear wheel would stick out. And then um, later on, if the tyres go down, um, the tread goes down I mean, then uh, we might change these to run flats and that way we don't have to carry anything. Enough chit chat. The bit we're going to do next is remove this spare wheel, we're going to cut the exhaust down and we're going to cut the chassis rails down. I would not run this car on this terrible tire ever at all. The next thing I'm going to do is cut this exhaust down. I'm pretty much ready to uh, cut. Now I know exactly where these cuts need to go and that is right up against this chassis rail, this cross member over here. So I'm going to leave the weld intact. I'm going, just gonna come out a little bit further and I'm gonna recess this cut in like so. I'm gonna go downwards, I'm gonna cut all the way through, all along there, because nothing on this side is needed. I'm gonna cut this nice and tight.
All right, that went pretty painlessly. Much better than I expected. Ends have gone. Obviously, the spare tire has gone. The exhaust has been cut down. I'm just going to reattach some of this wiring now. So this one goes back here. Just going to seal this real quick. Cool, so that brings to the end all the cutting I need to do on the chassis rail itself. One thing I did notice when I measured is that these things are going to get in the way of the chassis rail at the end there. So I'm just going to make some cuts in here on both and on both sides. And then I'm going to get this thing mounted up over here and let's see how it fits okay well that went better than expected it went on really really well there's actually a quarter of an inch or a five mil is that a quarter of an inch it's about a five mil gap between where i made the cuts on the chassis rails on the frame and the actual tub itself so it's cutting it close but it's good so everything is ready over here by the way i'm sorry that you missed the footage of um, me and my neighbor fitting this thing onto the back of the truck. Um, unfortunately, the plastic got in the way, so you didn't quite see it, but um, you're gonna have to trust me on that. The tub fits the frame, so we're ready to paint. And that's what's gonna happen next. Let's do it. One more quick coat of primer. And just like that, it's time for color. Finally, let's start with the black. <laughs> Two coats of this stuff, let it dry overnight, and we put the rest of the color on. Happy days. Now, I'm pretty happy with how things have gone so far, so fingers crossed that this last crucial step is um, going to be okay. So the black is now on, the trim of the black is on, much like at the bottom of the uh, truck itself. So the top has been sprayed with gloss black. So really what I've got to do now is mask up the black area so that I can put the color on both sides. I'm going to be doing six coats of that um, just like with the truck so that the color is consistent with what the uh, truck, there it is, the truck itself looks like. Um, and then after that we clear it. So it's going to be a big day. I'm going to be painting all day but most of this stuff will be on time lapse for you because well uh, you don't want to watch paint dry right. So. I'll put all the coats on and I'll wait about 10 minutes between each coat and then um, I'll pull the tape off and then the final stage will be to clear this thing. So yeah, let's do it. Now some of you might remember that on the truck I use this green tape, uh, which I'm told is automotive body tape. Uh, but I, when I pull the tape off after putting the color on, this tape lets some uh, glue residue behind on the black and it had meant that I had to sand the black back where this was and uh, respray it again with black. And I'm gonna try to avoid that happening this time. So I'm switching to this blue tape. Now, this I'm told is multi-surface 3M tape. So hopefully it's better quality in terms of the glue that's on this, but I'm not sure whether that's gonna be the case. We'll find out. I've got a feeling that the reason the adhesive came off this is because the paint itself, the uh, color, actually dissolves the glue inside these things. So let's see if the same thing happens with the blue tape. But in any case, all I'm gonna do is go around here and mask off the black. And I'm going to use the same method as I did with the truck itself. And so I'm just going to use this crease line as my masking point 
just like so and I'm going to do that all the way around. So now that I've got this uh, pretty much taped up and plastic sheet applied where the black is, I'm just going to hit this with a light sand just with some of the black overlays and then it's time to put the first coat on. All right, legends, the base coat is now on and there I say it, it's looking sweet. Everything's nice and neat. There's a few little nicks I didn't quite pick up with the putty, but for a home job, that's okay with me. That is looking very nice. And same side, same deal on the other side. So the next thing will be to get the second stage of this on and this is the candy that will go on top. So that's what I'm going to do next. Here comes another six coats. Done. All the color is now on this car. So it's time to peel this tape off and um, put the clear on. Come with me, let's see what we got. I'm not really sure where to start. This looks like a, as good a place as any. Come on, come on. Looking good so far. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of tape residue just there, but it's not horrible. It's not like the green tape that we used on the truck. But so far, so good. So far, it looks like this tape is a lot better than, than the other tape we used. All right, I'm gonna peel the rest of this tape off. So after several feet of tape and several yards of plastic, this tub is now painted. <clears throat> Just in the nick of time too because it's starting to get dark here. So what I'm going to do now is leave this thing to dry overnight. And then after that, I can finally put the clear on. And then after that, I can finally put this tray back on the truck. And then after that, I can finally paint all the little accessories like the lights like the uh, fuel cap door and then we've got a painted truck
All right, legends, the bed is on and everything went really, really, really well. So I'm quite happy with the result. Here it is. Um, I got my neighbor to give me a hand and I've got to say, I live in a really nice area. Everybody's been really supportive and accommodating for all my welding and, you know, fumes of chemicals and sprays and um, just having bits of this thing all over the place. The next thing will be to uh, paint this bed. The product I'm going to use for that is this thing, this brand, and there's a liter of this thing in here. I've seen people online cover their entire trucks with this thing, so it's going to be good enough for me. I picked up a little $20 uh, spray nozzle that you can use with an air compressor which I've got just there um, so I'll be attaching that to that and um, I'll, I'll be giving it a crack well this brand they also sell these things so the way these things work is like so so I'll be attaching this thing to my tailgate and uh, closing it off I think it looks pretty cool I'm gonna give it a crack anyway. You know, if it doesn't work out, I can always pick up a, another tailgate for this truck. Now it's not load bearing, so if, if you buy one of these, don't expect it to hold your cargo in your bed. It's really just a, you know, cosmetic close off thing, but that doesn't bother me too much because I've got my mounting holes ready to go so i'll have plenty of anchor points in this truck all over the place to uh, hold my cargo down whatever it is that I'll, I'll carry with it so that's the plan we'll be putting this cargo net on but before we do that i've obviously got to line this bed like i've always wanted to to do that i'm going to sand back the tub just ever so lightly with a scotch bright pad um, give it a good once over with some wax grease remover and I'm going to mask things off in here because I don't want this bed liner getting all over my garage. So in terms of using this thing, what I gather is you basically just unscrew it and pull this thing off. And um, from what I can see, you just puncture this, use a blade. Ugh. All right, that's done. So I'm going to take the air off and attach this thing. There we go, that's nice and tight. So <clears throat> we're pretty much ready to go here. I'm just gonna check over the cab real quick, make sure that all my tape is good. Everything looks fine here. Sometimes this, pit, this tape tends to peel up a little bit. So it's always worth just checking everything over one last time before you apply this thing. But everything looks good. All the plastic sheeting is out of the way. It's not gonna get caught up in anything. So what I'm going to do is spray from the bottom up. So I'm gonna get in the tray first and I'm going to get all the little nooks and crannies and I'm gonna work my way upwards. I hope that's the right thing to do. All you painters out there, let me know. Okay, I've got this thing ready to go. The air is hooked up and I'm just going to try a small area first and uh, see what this thing does. Oh, looks like I need to open this a little. A little more maybe. So guess what? I ran out. <laughs> so one is not enough for a tub. I've got to go get another one and then continue this process. 
Ah. I'm back with a new can ready for round two. Now, it's a good thing this thing ran out when it did. Let me show you why. Because, check this out. These are the holes for the tailgate. And these are also the holes for the latch and the bump stops and so on. And the same thing goes for this side. Like I said, I'm putting a cargo net on this thing. But if I ever wanted to put another tailgate back on this and I had covered it with this bed liner, I would have had quite the mission to get some screws back into these threads. It would have been filled with bed liner. So, I don't know, that was a bit of a divine intervention or miracle or something because now I can cover up these holes and uh, keep going. So let's keep going. Well, that was kind of fun. <laughs> I'm glad I covered up everything because it did make a big mess. It's uh, on there now and it's drying really, really nicely. So um, I'm not sure what to do at this point. Should I peel the tape off now or let it dry a little bit? I might just let it dry for a good 15 minutes before I attempt peeling anything off. I don't want to leave the tape on there too long because if this sets rock hard, um, I don't want to start having to cut this and pull the tape off with um, something abrasive. So I'm just going to let it set just a little bit, just so it's not water wet. And then um, this tape and this plastic will be coming off. Pretty happy with that. After something like more than an hour, because I had some lunch, I'm going to take this tape off and you're coming along for the ride. I hope nothing bad happens because we're pretty much done. I gotta say, if I spot any tub liner goo on my paint job right now, I wouldn't be happy. Oh, it's looking nice. Pretty stoked with that. Okay, after letting this thing dry overnight, I must say it's looking very nice indeed. So today we've got final little jobs to take care of basically, and that's mostly to do with the rear end. So we've got the lights to put in, and before we do that, there's a few uh, screws that will need to go through this, uh, this um, cavity behind the light here and they're the mounting hooks and the mounting points for the cargo net. So if you remember, this is what we'll be putting onto the back of this bed. We'll see how this thing goes and whether I get bored of it. But in any case, to mount this thing um, requires three screws on each end. So let me show you what those are. This is the mounting hardware for the cargo net. You've got these little <clears throat> points that the straps on the cargo net go through and they're held in on, on this eyelet here using these screws. Now these are what were supplied with the product and they're simply just self-tapping screws. Now I'm not a big fan of putting self-tapping screws into this tub. Uh, simply because what a self-tapping screw does is it drills a new hole into the sheet metal 
and it just pokes out the other side. And having painted this tub and rust proofed it as best that as I can, the last thing I want to do is put a self tapping screw in there that will open up a new hole exposing bare metal. Plus, I don't think these are particularly very strong. I mean, these literally just go into the sheet metal and they hold these things in place. They're not load bearing at all. So what I've decided to use is these things. So these are high tensile bolts, uh, they're zinc plated, so they're not going to rust. And I've pre-drilled the holes in the cab, just like so. There's one there as well, and one up here, which you probably can't see. Oh, there it is. So one, two, three. Yeah, so I pre-drilled those and I've um, applied uh, the enamel paint and the, um, the tub liner um, over the top of those holes. So there is no raw drilled um, sheet metal there um, that will potentially rust. Another thing we've got to do, of course, is reattach these uh, mounting hooks. So they'll be going on next. Again, the holes have been pre-drilled as you've seen before. So they'll go along the tub there. So that's kind of it. After all of that is in, it's time to put the lights in and these have been painted up nicely. I've got some new mounting hardware for them. So they look nice and shiny like the rest of the truck. And then I've got to say, we're coming to the end of this build. Okay, the next thing I'm going to tackle are the mounting points in this bed. So what I'm going to use are these eyelets. And the way I'm going to mount it is I'm going to put a washer onto the eyelet and then mount that onto the bed, into the sheet metal, into the pre-drilled holes that I've made. I'm then going to put another washer underneath the truck and a high tensile nut to tie it all down like so. And that will be one mounting point on this mini truck. I'm going to do eight of those, which should be plenty enough for this small recreational truck. Okay, those eye hooklets are in and they're looking pretty good. So the final step for me will be to put these taillights back on. Now your taillights consist of three pieces. That's the one that holds the bulbs. There's a trim piece and there's the lens cover as well. So. These, these are fairly easy to put together. One just mounts on top of the other like so. So that's your trim piece. Your lens cover goes on the top like so. So there's a bunch of screws that um, hold everything together. These four out here mount the uh, tail light assembly to the truck itself. And underneath you've got a bunch more that basically secure the lens and the trim piece to the lamp assembly itself. So before we head over to the truck, just gonna put a couple of these screws in. And now that I've got a couple of those screws holding the trim piece in place, before I put the lens back on, I'm gonna take both of these to the truck and plug it in just to make sure um, that all the bulbs work. And when I, I'm certain of that, I'll come back here and I'll put the lens back on. Time to put the lenses back on. And there we go.
here it is guys, my attempt at painting a car at home in my own garage. Is it perfect? No, far from it. But I must say, I'm happy with the results. Now, I'm not going to pretend that this was a quick process or that it was easy. Hopefully, you have watched the entire video series, which should tell you how long this took. I'm just glad that no one told me how long it would take because if I had known the workload required, it may have scared me off, especially here in a home garage. But now that it's done, I must say that I'm glad that I did it. I mean, just look at the difference. Before I did this project, I was always curious about how much a paint job would cost from an auto body shop. And I can now tell you, if you want a proper result, forget $1,000 or even $2,000 paint jobs. Fact is that it is a big job to paint a car, but definitely doable at home in your own space if you have the patience and the time. Just don't expect to get it done in a weekend. Which brings me to how long this whole process actually took. Well, I'm not quite finished yet. I still have to cut back the clear and polish the paint. But in a future video, I'll go through all of the time and money I spent on this little mini truck, including all the things I did wrong, I did right, and what I would do differently. So if you'd like to see that, please make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that YouTube will tell you when that video is out. But that's kind of it for today. I hope you like what you saw and if you did, please click the like button. It's been a big few weeks for me and I'm honestly glad I did this job. I now have a cool little mini truck to drive around. Sure, it needs to be lowered. I'll do a few other jobs on this car in the future videos. So stay tuned for those as well. But for now, that's enough chit chat from me. It's your turn to tell me what you think of the results. So comment below and let me know what you liked, what you'd do differently. But all in all, I can say that if I can do it here, you can do it too. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Now let's go for a spin. Ooh.